Hi, before I begin today's video, I want to give a shout out to a black booktuber and today's shout out is to Diana in color. I remember when I first got um, onto uh, YouTube to start doing booktube, she was one of the first uh, people that I followed on the platform. Um, she has been on the hiatus for a bit, but now she's back and she's going to be making videos again. So definitely go check out her channel. She's from New Zealand. She does great um, book reviews and discussion videos. Uh, so definitely go give her channel a look. And if you like it, subscribe. I will leave links down to her social media uh, and her channel down in the description box below. Hi, my name is Justin, aka Ghost Shooter, and today I am going to be talking about Harlem. This is part of my Topics in Black History series. You can find the rest of that in the playlist. I will place actually the playlist to that down in the description box below. Um, so this will be the last video of this week. I'll have a video, video for you uh, either Monday or Tuesday. I'm not sure if I'm going to take a break for the President's Day holiday. Maybe, maybe not. If I do, uh, then you'll see the next video on Tuesday, which will be a book review. If not, then you'll see a video on Monday um, about, well, <laughs> well, we'll see what that topic will be about. But um, so today I'm not going to focus on the Harlem Renaissance. That will actually be another video. So we'll be talking uh, more about what happened in the Renaissance and what that was all about in another video. However, today I just want to talk about Harlem itself. The topic for this video was inspired by the short story in the book, uh, Great Short Stories by African-American Writers, um, by the story, The City of Refuge, written by uh, Rudolph uh, Fisher. Rudolph Fisher was born in 1897, and he would go on to get his uh, master's at Brown University and his MD from Howard University. He went on to serve in World War I and would uh, eventually come back and open up an x-ray laboratory uh, in Harlem. While he was a, a doctor, he would pursue his passion of writing, writing short stories, essays, and novels. Um, and unfortunately, he died of intestinal cancer uh, in 1934, possibly from his exposure to, you know, x-ray radiation as x-ray laboratory. The City of Refuge, a short story uh, this topic is inspired by, is about a migrant coming from the South uh, to Harlem and his experiences in the city of Harlem uh, for the first time. Before Harlem became famous for the Harlem Renaissance, uh, it used to be occupied back in the day by Native Americans. The land that eventually became known as Harlem uh, was bought bought by uh, the Dutch from the Native Americans and was actually named after a town back in the Netherlands. The English eventually took over the area from the Dutch and during the American Revolution, Harlem was actually the site where George Washington won his first successful battle. Moving closer to the present, in 1873, developers began to realize the value of Harlem and began to build there. Uh, the area around that time was mostly made of Jews and Italians. But there was a very small population of African Americans, but not many. Now, around the turn of the century, uh, the developers, as they began building there, there was a huge boom in the need for buildings. Most of the development happen happening in Harlem was geared towards uh, the upper middle class and wealthy people. And, and it was mainly for, of course, whites. Now, African Americans did live in Harlem, but they didn't live there in great numbers at this time. They lived there in very small uh, neighborhoods. Most of the African American community were in places uh, in New York City, like Tenderloin and San Juan Hill. However, in 1905, the real estate boom became a real estate bust and real estate agents were trying to get people to fill in the flats and try to make some of their money back. So they began actually bringing in African Americans uh, into Harlem to fill in those spaces. Um, a lot of Amer African Americans began to move to Harlem uh, because of fear of race riots that happened in neighborhoods such as Tenderloin and San Juan. A lot of this movement into Harlem uh, by African Americans was facilitated by Philip Peyton Jr., who was called the father of Harlem, and he helped a lot of African Americans move into uh, places that they could afford in Harlem. And then as time went on, the population in Harlem boomed because of the Great Migration, which we talked about in another one of my videos in this series. So a lot of people were coming from the South and they were coming North, and a lot of them came North to Harlem. Now, as more Blacks began to come into Harlem, property values began to drop just because of the presence of African Americans. So a lot of whites began to move because the values of their properties were dro dropping, opening up more uh, spaces for African Americans to move in. So by 1914, there were about 50,000 Blacks in Harlem. By 1930, that number would be up to 164,000 and would peak in 1950 at 223,000. 
And of course, in Harlem during the 20s and 30s, sharecroppers and intellectuals, musicians and uh, actors began to mix in Harlem. And Harlem became known as the cultural mecca kind of a black America. And this is where the Harlem Renaissance uh, begins. And it's not really most of the people who were like the shakers and move movers of the Harlem Renaissance, the famous people. Not all were native to Harlem. However, they move because of the black migration to Harlem and in this giant melting pot of ideas and um, the opportunity to express oneself. Uh, you get this boom of African arts and cultures that occurs in Harlem and then spreads across the United States. Now for many, Harlem could be a, a place, a city of opportunity. It could be a place to express yourself, uh, but it also uh, could be a place of hardship as well. As Harlem grew, um, so did uh, the poverty in the, city, in the section, in the borough of the city as well. Um, unfortunately, because of discrimination, a lot of um, blacks living in Harlem uh, were living in poverty wages. And of course, uh, things like crime uh, began to increase as the population increased as well. Before the 1960s, there would be two race riots in Harlem, one in 1935, where uh, the rumor of a uh, Puerto Rican being beaten and possibly killed by police officers uh, caused people to riot, even though the rumor turned out not to be true. It was found that the cause of the riot was um, motivated, the people of the, of the crowd were motivated by the discrimination and the, the hardship in Harlem at the time. And then also another riot happened in 1943 when an African-American soldier uh, was shot by a policeman. In the 60s, Harlem became a center of political activism. A lot of uh, black nationalist groups uh, set up shop there. The Nation of Islam was very big in Harlem. And of course, their sp spokesperson for a while, uh, Malcolm X, was very well known. He would uh, unfortunately be assassinated in Harlem in the Audubon Ballroom. I actually got the chance uh, to visit the place where he uh, was shot on the field trip, and it's quite uh, quite an experience. Martin Luther King himself um, visited uh, Harlem during, I believe, the 50s, and uh, he uh, was almost killed uh, by an assassin, who, a woman who tried to stab him with a steel uh, letter opener. However, um, he was able uh, to recover with the proper medical treatment. Now, like every city, Harlem had its ups and downs. The 70s was the hardest for uh, Harlem as property values drop and also the population of blacks in the area dropped as well. But Harlem has since made a, a comeback and today the uh, issues there that they are, are dealing with is gentrification. Now, some people say that the gentrification is gonna bring in a good number of jobs. However, others argue that is pushing African-American owners and African-Americans who live there out of places where they have lived by choice for for many decades. So uh, this is an issue that, that the people in Harlem now are grappling with, but um, the legacy of what African-Americans have done uh, in, in Harlem, the, um, the art and the, the, the books that have come out of Harlem, the legacy uh, is still there and it still uh, impacts us today in the books we read and the art that we consume. Um, and Harlem uh, itself, the people there are also still uh, carrying the banner for those African-Americans who uh, produce such great works and, and legacies uh, that we still reverence and inspire us today. So that's the end of this video. Let me know how I did in the comment section below. Uh, definitely check out the rest of the series, the playlist, the link for the playlist will be at the end uh, of this video. So if you like this video, please hit the like button. If you wanna see more videos from me, please subscribe. You can follow me on Twitter at GhostFeeds28 on um, Instagram at Justin the Ghost Reader and on Guri. Still link to that down in the description box below. So as always, keep reading.